R.E.G. Modern by Tradition. A brand makes history. It was Thomas Edison who, in 1879, with the design of the light bulb, doused the world into electric light and had this innovation patented. The triumphal advance of electric lighting began. The mechanical engineer Emil Rathenau, a man with a clear vision, realized the benefits for Germany and Europe. Soon afterwards, in 1884 in Berlin, the Café Bauer shines in unfamiliar electric light. A year earlier, in 1883, endowed with the rights to use Edison's invention, Rathenau had already founded the Deutsche Edison Gesellschaft für Angewandte Elektrizität, German Edison Company for Applied Electricity. In 1887, it is being renamed Allgemeine Elektrizitätsgesellschaft. The AEG is born, headed by Emil Rathenau. What follows is nothing less than the rapidly increasing electrification of Germany. Berlin in the late 19th century. Imperial Germany develops into an industrialized country. IG plays a significant role. It soon rises to become Germany's largest electrical company and a business enterprise of international standing. From now on, IG and its developments change the world and shape technological progress. Since 1888, the IG pursued the business of constructing electric streetcars. A year later, in 1889, this mine locomotive is already running on rails. During this period, the IG also lays the foundation for the construction and development of modern traffic engineering. In 1891, at Halle an der Saale, the company built a complete electric streetcar system. It is the first of its kind in Europe and an economic success. Only five years later, 34 trams are in operation or under construction. At this time, the long-term chief engineer at IG, Mikhail Dolivo Dobrovolsky, is already considered the father of AC technology. He developed the three-phase alternating current. First, he invented the so-called squirrel cage induction motor. Then, the three-legged, three-phase transformer. With this, phase electricity becomes practically useful. To date, the induction motor is the most widely used electric motor. Without transformers, there would be no power transmission. At the International Electrotechnical Exhibition in Frankfurt am Main, also in 1891, the IG again sets new standards. The first long-distance transmission of electricity took place. By means of the new transformers, a high-voltage three-phase current of 20,000 volts was transmitted over 176 kilometers from Laufen to Frankfurt am Main. The IG is able to demonstrate that electricity can be transported with low conduction losses over long distances. A regional setup of power plants has become possible. Nationwide supply of electricity in the German Reich is fast approaching. 1899. At the Berlin Spandau Canal, the power plant Moabit goes into operation. It supplies current to a voltage of 6 kilovolts, which enables it to provide for a larger area. The power generation business has become an integral pillar of the IG. Two years later, at the turn of the century, the corporate group has set up around 248 power plants nationally and abroad, with a total capacity of nearly 200,000 kilowatts. Top performance also on the track. In 1903, this three-phase express rail car achieved a world record with a speed of 210.2 km per hour. In 1911, the first electrified mainline railway in Germany between Bitterfeld and Dessau is put into operation. Not only in engineering, but also in the field of industrial architecture, the REG now dominates the development. These are the years before the First World War in 1914. The German Empire is the leading economy on the European continent. In 1907, Emil Rathenau appoints this man, Peter Behrens, as artistic advisor to the REG. He's responsible for the overall appearance of the company. In the coming years, Behrens designs a new corporate identity. 
he creates and alters the IG trademark until, in 1912, it gets this shape. Behrens not only oversees the design of all IG products, but in 1909, with a turbine hall in Moabit, he creates the model building of modern industrial architecture. The accomplishment of Behrens? His design of IG products takes into account all of the technical constraints and processes of mass production, especially in the field of electric lighting. Here, for example, the arc lamp. Behrens aligns technical requirements with the artistic demands of modernity and thus becomes the prototype of the industrial designer. Many of his buildings for the RAG still dominate the Berlin cityscape. With the outbreak of World War I, the management structure of the IG changes. In 1915, Emil Rathenau dies. The leadership of the IG is now in the hands of his son, Walter Rathenau. During the war, he focuses on armament production, compensating for the drop of overseas market orders. After World War I, the German economy is suffering from the reparations to the Allies. But in 1922, with the Treaty of Rapallo between Germany and Russia, the German Reich is able to liberate itself from international isolation. The treaty has been negotiated by Walter Rathenau, who, meanwhile, had become foreign minister. The RAG benefits considerably. Russia is now its largest trading partner. In June 1922, Walter Rathenau is assassinated. Berlin in the 1920s. The Roaring Twenties bring an impressive economic recovery for the Weimar Republic, especially the electrical industry. In 1923, the Vauxhaus in Berlin hosts the first German radio station. Via the Telefunken company, AEG is directly involved. Starting in 1924, the same is true with the development of a new young medium called television. From 1928 on, the first TV sets of Telefunken are on the market. With the 1936 Berlin Olympic Games, the big moment of television has come. The mighty Econoscope, developed by IG Telefunken, is the first mobile television camera in the world and is popularly called the Olympic Canon. It provides most of the competition pictures in the Olympic Stadium, amongst others to 25 public TV viewing places in Berlin. Oben fliegt John Brown, Strandberg hinter ihm, Rosenberg kämpft sich heran. Metzler kommt, Ziel! Sieber im 100 Meter Lauf, ist er oben. From now on, the triumphal procession of this new medium cannot be halted. Nineteen forty-five, Germany lies in ruins and is divided. The IG also suffers severely. Many of its factories in East Germany and Russia are being nationalized, such as the plants here in East Berlin. But in West Germany, the IG manages a rapid reconstruction of its production facilities. 1951. The group's headquarters move to Frankfurt am Main. Germany experiences the so-called economic miracle. IG appliances, from kitchen stoves to washing machines, conquer the market and are now an essential part of German everyday life. Ei, guten Abend, lieber Mann. Ich dank dir, lieber Wichtelmann. Schauen Sie sich die Maschine an. Die bringt, was ich ganz sicher weiß, die Ehe wieder ins Geleis. Merken Sie auf, was ich jetzt sage. Sie nimmt dem Waschtag seine Plage. Meanwhile, the construction and development of proven and tested IG technologies goes ahead with giant strides. Gebe ich jetzt gewissermaßen den Startschuss. At the Internationale Funkausstellung of 1967, with a symbolic push by Germany's Foreign Minister Willy Brandt, the familiar black and white television pictures changed to color images. The Telefunken PAL system, an innovation of Telefunken. In 1970, after the merger with Telefunken in the same year, the IG is the 12th largest electric company in the world. 
with about 180,000 employees. The products of IG Telefunken are labeled with the seal of quality, made in Germany. IG dominates the industry. All over the world, the company builds industrial plants, power stations, steel mills, metallurgical and cement works. Mining plants are armed with IG conveying machinery. During the last decades of the 20th century, IG underscores 100 years of accumulated worldwide technological expertise with the construction of distinguished large-scale projects. In 1977, in Mozambique, Africa, the power of the Zambezi River is attained and converted into electrical energy. Via high voltage direct current transmission, the generated power is being transported over 2,000 kilometers to Johannesburg in South Africa, the largest HVDC system in the world. Now, the close trade relations with Moscow since the days of Walter Rathenau pay off. Until 1984, IG delivers 240 powerful gas turbine and compressor stations to the Soviet Union. To back up West Berlin's electrical power supply, IG builds a large-scale battery accumulator with a capacity of 20 megawatts in 1987. Later on, IG delivers large power converters to control generators in power plants to stabilize the electric supply network. At the same time, IG significantly shapes the engineering of high-speed railways like the so-called German ICE. From the mid-90s of the last century, IG spearheads the construction of the complete 27-kilometer-long commuter train system in the Malaysian capital Kuala Lumpur. It is still maintained and modernized by IG. The IG today, after its re-establishment in 2003, at its traditional location on Hohenzollerndamm in Berlin. The company is the guardian of its technical heritage. Now, the growing technological knowledge is pooled, which puts us in a position to embark on new and contemporary ways in energy technology. Alternative energies pose new challenges. The aim is to increase the quality of electrical networks and to decentralize power generation. This is the future and our mandate from history. Modern by tradition. <laughs>